Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Hopefully you guys are doing well. Today we're going to take a, a deep dive into Spider's Den. Now, Spider's Den is an area where a lot of people struggle inside this game. We're going to talk about like the two or three main strategies, give you guys a bunch of options in terms of how to assemble an appropriate team to where you can handle the spider. The spider is a fairly easy boss to handle if you have all of the key components on your team. Again, we're going to give you two different types of teams and then talk about different options in in each of those kind of pivotal, crucial roles on your Spider's Den team. So let's jump into it here. Let's not waste any time. I don't want this video to be 45 minutes long. Come on, Ash. Let's do this. Concise. I am uh, convinced that you can probably do this. So stage one through stage like 14 or so, uh, you guys should be able to just all out nuke that, right? Like skull crown that up. Boom, done, right? You just get, just get nuke, right? And then a little support is fine too as you're progressing. But stage like 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, a lot of people have trouble with 19 and 20 are very, very challenging, especially for the first time you're trying to complete them. So let's talk about the best strategies to use. So strategy number one isn't much of a strategy, and this is kind of an end game strategy. So we're not even gonna talk about it that long at all. I'm just gonna assemble a team and you guys can kind of see how it works. Now I've said this many, many, many times here on the channel, guys, but having two cold hearts, if you ever happen to pull not just one, but two, I think that cold heart, more so than any champion inside the entire game, prove me wrong, is worth building two of because you can use two cold hearts in spider and two cold hearts in fire knight on you know stage 20 soon to be stage 25 when that is released later on this year so uh you know just keep that in mind guys both uh, cold hearts are definitely cold heart is one of the best champions it doesn't matter the affinity either because she's void so no matter what affinity stage 25 spider happens to be you're going to be good with cold heart so we have an increased crit damage champion we have a weakened defense champion and then we have three champions that do damage based on enemy max HP and again here guys we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this because I totally recognize and realize that this is not a very accessible team this is the team that I use though and I just wanted to show you guys what kind of a all-out nuke strategy would look like you don't have to have these exact champions some people run four royal guards in a, in a stag knight some people run you know a stag knight and three cold hearts or four cold hearts so there's different combinations some people uh, run bad el kazar instead of uh, uh an increased crit damage uh champion as well to get that extra damage off of the poison some people run septimus to just one shot the spider right <laughs> so really there's a lot of different options for you guys out there in the all-out nuke strategy but it's pretty basic what you see is what you get right cold heart's gonna go two times now and kill the spider ready Cold heart number one, boom. Cold heart number two, spider's dead. So that is the all out nuke strategy again, guys, but it's very champion dependent. So again, we're not gonna really talk much more about it. The key components, we already went over them. Having th at least three champions, some people run four that deal damage based on enemy max HP. Going in there with a Renegade or a Kaimar, you know, you can play around with the turn with the with how many champions you need. Uh, having a decreased defense and weaken champion on the team really helps a lot. And then having kind of that flex role, increased crit damage or a bad El Kazar. Now, let's talk about more realistic teams because odds are if you have a team like that already built then you're not watching this video or maybe you are by the way pause what teams are you using right now and what stage are you stuck on or have you cleared level 20 spiders den let me know so let's build an hp burn team i actually have one built right here so i in preparation for this video to make sure it worked right uh so let's go ahead and show it and then tell you about each of these champions roles and how the team actually works because odds are again you might not have all of these champions either but the good news is all of them can be replaced rather easily i'm going to give you guys a bunch of options to replace with but first i need to grab an increase attack champion to put on the team with ultimate galak and that's going to be gorgarab so uh the best option by the way instead of gorgarab would be duchess but i'm not going to do that to you guys Talented, brilliant incredible amazing show-stopping spectacular but putting Duchess would be the option because she's going to also put veils and bring a lot more to the table, including block debuffs, which is a great ability to have on a spider team. You don't even have to deal with the poisons. Again, we'll talk about all that stuff in a second here, but let's talk about the key components to this team. This is an HP burn team. And we also have, uh, well, yeah, it's an HP burn team. So it's all about control and burn. The other strategy, so there's all out nuke, 
control and burn, and then control in nuke if you don't have an HP burn champion or you don't have one built, okay? So this is control and burn, and these are the essential kind of roles on this team, right? We have a tank, and that's going to be Contra the Cyclone. She's a really good tank because she's opposite affinity, and again, we know there's, you know, five more levels coming to Spiders. Uh, whatever level 25 may be, we're going to want to go anti-affinity or have our tank be, you know, one-third the HP of our next highest champion that honestly involves, you know, unkillable and block damage, stuff like that, right? So anyway, on the A1, still buff from target, whatever. She's damage based on defense, a lot of uh, defense. Contra the Cyclone is one of the best spider tanks in the game. All enemies three times. We have block buffs. We have a decreased attack, decreased speed, weaken, decreased accuracy, or a heal reduction. It's place each hit has a chance of placing one of the following for two turns. On a three-turn cooldown, Chaos Tempest is an insane ability. And look at uh, decreased accuracy, weaken, heal reduction, decreased speed. Uh, all work really, really well against the Spiderlings, okay? Uh, and the Mother Spider as well. So, decrease each enemy's accuracy by 10 for each debuff they are under. This champion receives 4% uh, less damage for each debuff on the attacker. Heals this champion by 1250 HP every time a debuff expires. She can basically take care of herself, right? And she has to provoke on five or more debuffs. Uh, so very, very good spider tank. Okay, Ash, okay, I don't have Contra, you idiot. Why are you showing me her, dude? Well, Drekstar Blood Twin is two birds, one stone. Actually, in this team, three birds, one stone. If I have Drekstar on this team, think about it. I can remove Contra. I can remove Ultimate Galette because he's the HP burn champion. And I don't need the increased attack from Gorgorav. And now let me put them all back on the team. Be right back. So they're back. I didn't make you suffer through that again. But you guys kind of get the point here. A one, one a Drexar Blood Twin is one of the most insane tank spider tanks out there because he serves multiple roles. He's going to be tanking anti-affinity and applying the HP burn every time he's attacked pretty much because of his passive, okay? But we're not going to do that. We're going to go Contra instead so I can show you how this team works. So a decrease defense, a debuffer on your team, obviously going to be essential. Uh, we have Stagnite on this team. I say essential actually, but you can get by if you don't care so much about time. You can get by without a debuffer. So I guess Yes, in a way, it's optional. Let's say this team was dying, even with Stagnite on it all the time. I didn't have good gear. I would just replace Stagnite with Reliquary Tender and have a cleanser on the team as well. As a matter of fact, let's just show it Reliquary Tender, see if we can win with two support champions. Now, let's talk about the rest of the team here. Silo Drix. Every day and every night. He's got to be stopped. Of course she's on the team, of course. We need a stun champion on the team because the idea here is we want to keep the spiderlings alive so that they can burn under the HP burn. So we also need a stun champion or a freeze champion on the team and we'll give you guys a bunch of choices. I'm going to go through like 20 champions uh, for substitutions on all these champions after we watch this battle. And then after that, it's just support, right? So we have a reviver on there, also increase attack and Gorgorab. Uh, he's going to work out just fine. So let's see how the team works here. And again, no decreased defense champion on this team. We're still going to be just fine. Make myself a little bit smaller here. So you can see my man Gorgorab do his thing. There's increased attack. That's going to allow us to apply the HP burn. And there it goes. HP burn on all these spiderlings. You can see Contra the Cyclone is tanking for my team, just like she's supposed to be doing. And after this, at this point, the battle is already pretty much over. The setup is complete. We have all of the HP burns on all of the spiderlings. You look at the HP of the mom's, the mother spider here, guys. Every single tick of those spiderlings is doing a ton of damage to the spider mother, and everybody is staying alive as well. Oh, perfect. This is a perfect situation. We are probably going to get a heal on the spider mother. If you want to avoid those heals as well, guys, you can just run. See that big heal? Run a uh, heal reduction champion, right? Another reason why uh, Cold Heart is so good against this spider. But at this point, it's not the end of the world. We can just set things up again. The good news is, is Contra is not going anywhere. We have that support role with uh, with Reliquary Tender. Now, what if you don't have Reliquary Tender? Let's talk about substitutions in the support area. Well, Apothecary is a great champion to use for Spider because not only is he Johnny on the spot with the spot heals on a two turn cooldown on his A2, but he also has that increased speed and increased turn meter. 
Turn meter is a very important part of Spider. You can see there's not a lot of turn meter on this team, but it's not necessary. It's very helpful, as you saw with the Heartseeker ability, the A3 of Cold Heart on the all out nuke team, right? So uh, you guys get the point, right? I mean, by this point, you guys get the, in, in this team, I, I have to be honest with you guys, they're not in great gear. None of these champions, except for maybe Reliquary, is in good Relentless set, uh, but everybody else on the team is in like average gear, average gear. You have all five or six star, but not all out legendaries will all glyphed up and stuff like that, especially Ultimate Galek. I mean, the nice thing is, is once you have the key components of a spider team assembled, the rest will kind of work itself out. And you guys can see again here, not gonna be the fastest team in the world, but it's effective. It's very effective using champions that, aside from Contra, are pretty accessible, right? And look at that. Contra is able to heal herself up and things are looking really good here, right? And again, Drekstar Blood Twin. Let's actually just go through some of the substitutions right now. Why don't I move myself away from Gorgorab's behind and go over here. Ah, much more comfortable over here in the corner. All right, so let's talk about the key roles really quickly here. Tanks. One of the best tanks in the game, other than Contra and Drekstar, who we've talked about quite a bit here, is actually Sinesha. Gonna talk about why in a second. I really wanna show you Sinesha and talk about what makes her such a good tank. Uh, but also Zephyr Sniper, Uncommon Champion. It's an option for you guys. And Paragon. Just make sure you build Paragon with low HP. Again, he'll uh, put, place the unkillable on himself. And he will die eventually unless you put Renegade on the same team. So there's some options there. And again, guys, a three-minute run, but it got the job done. And 11 million damage now in front of Ultimate Galek. 11 million damage on Ultimate Galek. But again, guys... Paragon, Zephyr Sniper, Drekstar, Blood Twin, Contra, and Sinesha. What I want to do here is actually show you Sinesha. Talk about why she's such a good spider tank. So let's take a quick look at her. Sinesha on her A1 attacks all enemies, places an extra hit on enemies with less than 50% HP. So what you can do is build her in a stun set, right? And then she's going to be tanking because she's Force Affinity. Actually, not stun. My bad, my bad, my bad. Forget that. Forget that. Beep. Uh, put her in, obviously, a lifesteal set. There we go. She's going to be healing herself by a ton of damage off of that A1 because think about all the spiraling she's going to be attacking on an AoE hit, right? Not a stun. Lifesteal, right? To keep her alive, Ash. Come on, bro. Not that hard. But there's more on Sinesha. Oh, I can't pull up my Sinesha, can I? Let me go to my Sinesha real quick. It's going to be a very important set of masteries I want you guys to think about. Again, Lifesteal Gear. This is for a Spider Tank Sinesha. She's a really, really good option for you guys. Uh, where is she? So this is not built for Spider right now. This is for Faction Wars. But let's, uh, let's take a look at her masteries here. So what we want here is Retribution. 50% chance to counterattack when this champion loses 25% of their max HP or more from a single enemy skill. So she's going to be, boom, even more uh, AoE attacks. And ergo, even more healing onto herself. She's already going to be tanking because she's opposite affinity uh, tank, right? And then also, uh, let's see, kill streak is not bad, but methodical is very important on this champion as well. Increases the damage inflicted by this champion's default skill by 2% each time it's used during battle. So you can get an extra 10% on her A1 as well. There's a lot of nice synergy between having an AoE on the A1 and a lot of these different abilities. So again, just make sure you're picking up Retribution. Methodical, again, very, very good uh, for Sinesha in Lifesteal Gear. She's a great tank for you guys. Let's talk about some other options here. We already talked about Paragon, pairing him with Renegade is a great combination. Stun. What about Stun? What if you don't have Scylla the Drakes? Who are some options for you guys? Well, one of them is one of my favorite champions in the game. Archmage Helmet. Incredibly good for uh, for Spider, right? A same kind of a role as Scylla the Drakes on the team that we just made. Uh, also has increased crit rate, increased speed, and increased crit damage. All that he's bringing to the table. He's a Doom Tower exclusive champion though, but still very, very good. Okay, Ash, that's great, man, but what about a rare option? What about a rare 
Fire Champion. Well, we have Bellower. Put Bellower in a stun set, and he's going to be stunning because all of his attacks are AoE. Not just put him in a stun set, but put your Bellower in a stun set. Build him out with some accuracy. Uh, the stun set will not be predicated on that accuracy, but he has a lot of debuffs that he's bringing to the table. Might as well to get it, take advantage of that, right? When we talk about how much accuracy is needed, we're looking at around 10 points of accuracy per level. Some people say 12 points per level of the dungeon. So either 200 to 220 accuracy is needed to land your debuffs. But again, if you have a shield uh, or a, excuse me, a stun set on a champion, it doesn't matter. Accuracy is not, is not relevant in those situations. But I will say this on Bellower, if you're going to put him in a stun set, again, talking about masteries, pick up Fearsome Presence. It's worth it on this champion, guys. Increases the chances of placing a stun from 18% on a stun set to 23% on a stun set. That's really, really helpful because, again, all of his attacks are a AoE attacks. AoE, AoE. AoE, a great stun option for you guys. Also, I'd be remiss if I did not mention one of the best spider champions in the game. I didn't include him on that team because I didn't want to go too epic heavy, but miscreated monster. I mean, he has an AoE stun and an AoE shield. Shield, another important uh, component of keeping your team alive, especially if you don't have as godlike a tank as Drekstar or as uh, Contra. A tank is not mandatory. It's just nice to have, okay? So miscreated monster. I mean, there's a million of these champions, guys, Shurimani, Gurgur the Augur, uh, but I'm trying to go non-legendary here for you guys. And uh, it's actually not Lua. I always get Lua and Luria confused, not a Silar. <laughs> Where are you, Luria? There we are. My bad. Luria has the highest AoE freeze percent at 75% out of any non-legendary in the game. Again, 75% on an AoE freeze is a great option for you guys for CC crowd control in the spider. What about turn meter? Well, we just saw her. Silar is amazing with turn meter with a decreased speed debuff on all enemies for two turns and then decreases the turn meter of all enemies by 40% all on a four turn cooldown. She also has an AoE on her A1 as well and an AoE with a decreased accuracy on her A2. Silar definitely deserves a mention in this video because she's doing crowd control and a lot of AoEs that she's bringing to the table as well. We also has Ra have Raz and Scarhide. I guess I'm not going to show you all of these champions. You guys pretty much know who these guys are, but on the bog down ability, decrease turn meter uh, full, 100% turn meter depletion. Really nice to have that. Uh, also, we have a new champion who I still don't have yet, guys. <laughs> It's Deacon Armstrong. Deacon Armstrong is great because he has an AoE decreased defense, a debuffer, and he fills the turn meters of all allies by 15% and decreases the turn meters of all enemies by 15% and then grants an extra turn. Again, speed boosters or turn meter manipulators are great to have. And as you saw, even the AoE decreased defense is great to have, but you saw in the last match, it's not necessary with HP burn on your team. Sometimes it's just better to go with an additional support champion or a turn meter booster, such as Deacon Armstrong or Apothecary. What if you don't have Relic Tender, you don't have Apothecary, you don't have any good options to cleanse your team? Well, you can go with a block debuff champion, guys. So there's a lot of debu uh, block debuff champions, but again, focusing on non-legendary choices for you guys. Uh, undead, Ash, undead, not demon. Mausoleum Mage, probably one of the better uh, well-known champions. He has a cleanse and he has a, a block debuffs on all allies on a three-turn cooldown for one turn. Block debuffs, again, is going to help you prevent those poisons from landing. Another great option, I'm a big, big fan of this dude, is Grizzled Jarl. Grizzled Jarl has a heal reduction 100% on his A1. Damage based on defense, we talked about heal reduction being great against the spider, preventing that big heal from happening. And then block debuffs, increase defense right? This dude's got it all. Also has decreased attack on an AoE, uh, damage based on defense on a four turn cooldown. This guy was crucial for me in Faction Wars, especially. Uh, one more for you guys. He saw something. Oh yeah. Yeah. Eh, Duchess. <laughs> That's a legendary option for you guys, right? We talked about, now let's just go through all the, all, all the champions I would advise you guys go with. In terms of shield champions, we talked about miscreated monster. Uh, we have a lot of new shield champions added to the game. I'm not going to go through them all. You can just go to a, a Yumi Love and look for shield champions. There's a bunch of them. But one of my favorites, too, is actually this guy. I don't have him as well, but Claude Beast Feeder. 
He has a shield on a three turn cooldown, and then he has an increased speed and increased accuracy on a three turn cooldown on his A3. Very fast champion as well, and has a lot of HP. So this guy brings a lot to the table. I'm a big fan of this dude. Uh, we also have, um, well, I think Draco the Gaunt was a uh, fusion champion, was he not? So maybe some of you guys, more than a typical legendary, might have him. I feel like he's very, very good. Again, in Spider, he has an increased attack, increased defense, and a block damage with allies less than 30%. But then he has a... uh, Where's his shield? Did it increase attack block damage? Plays a shield right in front of my face, Ash. Come on, bro. You're ruining the video. It was such a good video until this point. Where's the shield as I click on the ability with a dude looking into a huge... Shield. <laughs> Where's the shield ability, guys? I could have just edited that out, but I didn't. I didn't. I'm real. Keep it real with you guys. So, place a shield up equal to 50% of the champion's max HP on allies for three turns on a four turn cooldown, and then heals every time the shield is removed. Uh, very, very good champion, I feel like, for shield options. Again, very fast, with a lot of HP as well. I think the Draco the Gaunt is actually a really good champion. I mentioned Freeze Champions, one of the best in the game. I don't have them, but Gurgle the, the Augur is an incredible champion for Freeze. Just freezing all over the place, this guy. All right, so those are some Freeze uh, and shield options for you guys. When I say shield, you know, Shield is in a support role for this team. There's so many good legendary choices as well. Uh, Sir Nick, uh, Vrask, uh, Valkyrie, yeah, I could go on and on. You guys get the point, right? Shield champions. Next up is Nukers. We obviously talked about Cold Heart. I mean, can't say enough good things about Cold Heart, right? She's the best champion in the game for Fire Knight and Spider next to Septimus, I guess, right? So Cold Heart's very good. Again, 100% turn meter decrease while doing like 2 million damage potentially on her A3. That's really, really good. And she has a heal reduction on her A1 by 100%. They don't make them. They don't make rares like Cold Heart anymore, do they, ladies and gentlemen? They really don't. All right, next up is going to be in terms of uh, nukers again. Nukers on your team. We talked about Septimus, Royal Guard. I mean, those are just the best of the best options out there, guys. Royal Guard's a champion that I use heavily uh, on his takedown ability, and he has a great aura too. Attack and Dungeons by 35%. Not necessarily for Spider, but, you know, I, well, yeah, you can use it for Spider. Why not, right? I mean, damage on the A2 is based on enemy max HP, but it's also scales on attack, unlike Cold Heart. Uh, so that's Royal Guard. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Well, we don't talk about this guy that often, but again, depending on the affinities of the next five levels, don't sleep on Husk. His Despair ability does not do as much damage as the other enemy max HP abilities. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys, but what it does have is a really decent shot at landing a stun. So we have a 60% chance of placing a stun debuff when booked, and then again, damage is, is good. It's decent, right? So Husk is a great option for you guys. When we talk about turn meter, and enemy max HP. Well, you guys know where I'm going on this one, right? A very, 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 very good champion in Armager, and he's an, an uncommon champion. It's a shame that we're 20 minutes plus into this video, and it's the first time I'm mentioning Armager. He has decreased target's turn meter by 30% on his A1, and then on his A2, he has, again, later rest on a two-turn cooldown damage based on enemy max HP. A lot of teams will run Three, four, or even five Armagers I've seen against the Spider as well. That's a different all-out nuke strategy for you guys if you want to get creative. So that's Armager, very, very good champion. Also, um, I guess we'll take a quick look at Septimus, because why not look at another champion that I don't have that I am jealous of? My bad. Here we go, Septimus. So Septimus on the Holy Sword ability will attack one enemy, will ignore shield block damage buffs, damage increases according to max HP. This is the hardest hitting enemy max HP ability inside the game. Boy, do I wish I picked this guy up in the 10 times event. Uh, just got unlucky, or maybe I didn't get, maybe, maybe what happened was exactly what should have happened according to the odds, right? Don't pull shards in a 10 time event, guys. Don't do it. Uh, I do want to mention one other champion in terms of HP burn champions. Uh, you know, Venus, Trunda, there's a lot of HP burn options in the legendary category, but one non legendary champion that is kind of a new one, not HP burn, I take it back. He does have HP burn, but it's actually freeze. So this guy has an AoE freeze at an 80% clip. Uh, I guess 
technically it's higher than Luria, but it's only if the enemies have an attack that's higher than their defense, which is the case for the Spiderlings. So Achek the Wenderin is a good option for you guys, even as kind of a tank uh, in Lifesteal and as a Freeze Champion as well. He also brings a block debuffs and a strength into the table. So he's bringing, like we talked about, a block debuffs, a really, really good buff to have on your team to block those poisons. So it's a really nice champion for Spider. He also has a defensive aura in all battles by 25%. So guys, we talked about support champions quite a bit as well. In terms of debuffers, I do want to point out one more champion. You guys know debuffers, Tayrell, Stagnite, Ugo, Deacon Armstrong, uh, it, but, but this guy, this guy is really good as well. It's Duck the Pierce, the new champion added to the game. Uh, he has a decreased accuracy on his A1, okay. And then he has an AoE decreased attack and an AoE decreased defense on a three turn cooldown, provided the affinity is appropriate, again, uh, because we have to get the decreased attack to land in order to land the decreased defense. Or excuse me, we have to get the critical hit in order to land the decreased defense. And then on his A3 though, He's bringing a provoke to the table as well. So if you're looking for a provoke tank for your team, any champion with provoke will do the trick. If you don't have Contra, if you don't have, I, I mentioned there were other options. If you don't have a Contra or a Drexstar tank, again, go with a Provoke champion such as Duck the Pierced. Put them in Lifesteal gear or put a lot of support around them on the team. Keep them alive, essentially, and you'll be looking A-OK. -okay. So uh, I guess Duck the Pierce is a great Provoke option. I lied. One more champion I'll show you for a great Provoker to have on your team is going to be another new champion in Vogoth. Vogoth's great because whenever he's attacked, he's He's healing all the allies as well, and he's provoking on his A2. Not bad at a 75% chance to land that provoke on a three-turn cooldown, which is exactly what we're looking for. Three-turn cooldowns from our provoker. So guys, I hope this video, you know, at least gave you some ideas on how to build an appropriate spider team that actually works. Again, that first team that, I, or the second team that I showed you, not the all-out nuke, but having an ultimate Galek with a Gorgorab as kind of the base of your team and then putting some support around them, you guys are gonna do just fine. So guys, thank you so much for watching until the end of this video. I really appreciate, especially you guys at the end who stuck around the entire video except for that guy who forgot to turn the computer or, or, or the phone off or whatever he's like oh yeah that guy's still on anyway i'm rambling thank you so much for watching and as always take care guys